this is certainly one of the major topics that I want to cover today because, uh, you know, HDR, high dynamic range, is a really critical part of the ultra HD or what many people call 4K uh, experience now that is just starting to become available. We've got, uh, we have HDR in the commercial cinema with Dolby Vision, which is one type of HDR, uh, but we're starting to get it in the home as well. And so I'm sure interested to hear what people had to say about HDR and the whole ultra HD the move towards that. Uh, I forget which one of you uh, wrote to me in, in preparation for this show and said uh, that UHD is a triad of higher resolution, what's really sort of a misnomer, 4K, HDR, and wide color gamut. Um, <clears throat> let's see, Mike, was that you? I, I actually sent, sent a piece oh, in Chris on that. Sent Okay, very uh, and, good. But we all, I think we all pitched in on it. Yeah, uh, some of the um, the terminology... Uh, no, but I'll... I'll... Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, Mike. Chris beat you, Chris beat you to it. <laughs> okay. So, Go ahead, Chris. So anyway, so with, um, with Ultra HD, I mean, there has been a whole uh, discussion of what do we call this new set of technologies. And the name is seeming to come out as uh, Ultra HD... And I think I heard a new term called Ultra HD Premium. And it's a way of educating and promoting to the consumers. But it really consists, last year it was talked about as maybe a four-legged stool. And this year people are saying, well, it's, it's, maybe it's a three. And there were some people who were saying it's, it's a two. And basically, if you, if you look at the video space of the Ultra HD, you've got the 4K or the, the uh, frame size. You've got uh, the wide uh, color gamut, which is giving you more rich colors than we've had in the past. And, uh, and then we've got the uh, high dynamic range, if I haven't mentioned that one already, uh, which is the, the lights and darks. And a lot of discussion there about how bright uh, the TV can be. And, uh, you know, so the new, there were some new st standards announced that uh, saying that some of the LCD uh, with an LED backlit uh, displays will have a thousand nits and right. that's to compare with uh, today where we're up at basically a hundred um, and then right. OLEDs get a little bit of a break and they can go to 540 nits and then on, right. the, on the low end there's there's some numbers there that are basically is how dark is dark uh, you know or when is black um, right but but the uh, the other one that was left out and the reason why I was calling it the triad was people are kind of poo-pooing uh, the high frame rate so basically, you know, we, we grew up with 24 frames. We should, you know, keep on looking at 24 frames is one school of thought. Uh, there was some interesting discussions there about, uh, you know, is, that, is there a cultural bias there? Because in the U.S. we're used to 30 frames per second, 24 in the theater, double frame rates right. for maybe 60. And it was funny because the, uh, the folks from the U.K. were saying, well, you know, to us, 30 looks weird and 60 looks weird because we're used to 25 and 50. Right. So, well, um, this is, you yeah. know, this is certainly a big, a big question to me uh, is, and I agree with you, it seems like high frame rate has kind of, you know, taken a back seat to these other things. And while the other things, high dynamic range, wide color gamut are, are really important, um, I think high frame rate is too, but there seems to be less sort of talk about it, buzz about it, because uh, a lot of people say, no, we want to keep 24 for movies because that's what we've had for 100 years. And I'm not quite in that camp. I, I've seen high frame rate. Uh, did, did, by the way, did they show any high frame rate examples at the tech retreat? There was a great presentation with uh, where we had a, uh, I forget the name of the uh, projector, but there was a projector that was doing 120 frames per second. Mm -hmm. And a comparison, uh, a big discussion about cameras and capture where you've got uh, the, where you can change the frame rate, uh, the, ap um, the exposure or the aperture time, and how you can synthesize. So if you do 120, you can take that down to, artificially down to, uh, uh, down to, to any frame rate you want, you know, 24, 48, 60, 25, or, eh, can you, whatever goes in evenly. Right. But you can subsample it down and, uh, and generate the same effects. Mm -hmm. 
and and use frame rate as a as an artistic uh, component, not just a you know everything you're going to see is at 120. Right. Well, you know, I, I understand that uh, John Erland is a great example of using frame rate variable frame rates as a as an artistic tool, but you know, there's also the issue of you know being able to see things more clearly, moving things in particular. Uh, Ron, you've done some some investigations into this, right? What what's your sense of do we do you think high frame rate will ever be something that will become commonplace, or is it just going to be too much resistance to it. Well, I, it just depends. Um, I, I kind of hedge on this. I, I have a stand on it, and uh, one of my employers, Jim Cameron, who has a definite stand on it. Oh yeah, uh, no kidding. He uh, he and I get into some interesting conversations. The to put it in a thumbnail of the the banter that we have is that to me, and I think to everybody, to go what you just said at 24, when you do a movie in 24, we're so used to a movie being fantasy, and at 24 frames in film with the film grain. It's a fantasy. Now, Jim did this great test where he, we had a, a set and he shot every frame rate in three different formats. And the 24, a medieval scene was a medieval scene. But when he shot it at 120 frames, double flash, it was sharper than video. And he, the, con, the conversation between the two of us is, I said, wait, Jim, a medieval knight fighting is a fantasy. When you make it look like the 10 o'clock news, it's not <laughs> fantasy anymore. And to mm -hmm. believe that there's a knight down the street having a sword fight, it just isn't cutting it. But <laughs> his point is that it's more real, it's sharp, and everything you, you just said, it's a better quality video. There's no two ways about that. But what does it do to the story? Mm. My opinion is that in the slower frame rate, you go back into the fantasy because everybody knows the difference between, um, except for the one Hobbit at 20 or at 48 frames, but at 24 frames, the Hobbit is a fantasy. And it's not like a video on, you know, the 10 o'clock news. So there's the right. contrast. To me, it's, it's a, uh, a creative tool that's used to do something. So 48, I can I can palette 48 if you're talking movies. Now, with this whole situation that we're dealing with with HDR, that is also now in video. So sports is now into this whole thing, and they're doing sports up to 360 frames for the super slow-mo. So mm. you've got a contrast of the fantasy of a movie or a soccer game or a football game uh, being live – and having all of the elements of the high, of the wide gamut color, the HDR, uh, and the 4K UHD resolution. So there's a place for everybody. It's they're just jockeying on who's going to be where. 